attaching the loose ends of the rebar together, they make a wire with knotted ends and a puller. And this puller swivels out as it pulls and it twists the wires together. So you take the wire, bend it underneath the rebar, place your hooks and pull. And you're attached. So I've gone ahead and made a grid of rebar here on top of the slab and basically we've got an 18 inch center so 18 inches in each direction is the measurement for this grid. I use the same method of attachment using those twisters to attach about every other space. I don't attach every one, it's a solid grid in and of itself just with every other space tied together. I then took one of my bends that runs through the foundation and lifted it up hanging it from the ends of the grid so that it's elevated and hanging within the concrete. When we pour this I'll either have to place uh, what are called dobies, which are small little pieces of rock which lift the, the rebar off of the, off of the sand, or I'll have to lift it by hand with a rake as the concrete is poured. The rebar needs to be not below the concrete, but within the concrete. So we want to put it right about in the middle. If we've got a four inch slab about two inches off the ground, which is what a dobie would give us. Same as the grid pattern in the foundation wall itself, we want to make sure that the rebar is floating within the concrete. As I said earlier, this one here is hanging, secured from the grid, which keeps it up into the concrete. The bottom one, which we want to keep close to the bottom of the foundation, is uh, about an inch or a half, two inches perhaps off the ground, and that's about where you want it to be. Now, before you pour the concrete, you want to make sure, and throughout the process, you want to make sure that there's no organic materials, no sticks, paper, any of that kind of stuff in the slab. Rocks, nails, anything like that is fine, but anything that's organic will decay over time and create voids in the concrete. With all my dobies in place now, I've gone and laid out and installed my anchor bolts. Now the actual layout for anchor bolts will depend on your code, so uh, check your local code book and see what's required in your area. Now, when you lay them out, you have to keep in mind where your openings, uh, like doors, will be and uh, also where the actual plates themselves run. So I start in one corner and I work down laying out my plates. I know I have a 10-foot plate, then an 8-foot plate, and a 12-foot plate. So I have all of those marked on the actual form boards. The reason I do this is that in my code, uh, and most likely in your jurisdiction as well, you have to have an anchor bolt within one foot of the end of your board. So you have to mark those all out, then you can start with your end pieces and then find the centers based on what the uh, local distance between bolts is in your area. Now I'm using here what's called an anchor mate. Uh, there's a number of different ways to do this. You could do it just with some scrap wood. Um, I like the anchor mate because it's designed specifically to give me a certain offset and hang my bolt at a certain height. So the idea here is I set this right in place and now I don't have to hand place any of the bolts around the building. Uh, again, this is a load-bearing straw bale. I'm going to have another plate on the inside, which I'll have to hand place those bolts. So this just eliminates half the work for me before the pour uh, begins. Now I've got this wall braced off uh, pretty significantly. It's a, it's a little bit of a drop here, so to get a stake deep enough into the ground, I wanted to make sure that I had enough of these so that the, the wall didn't bow out with the weight of the concrete. Another thing I've done is I've left a dry line or a string line on here so I can come back with my block of wood like we did to set this in place and check it as the pour takes place. So if we do have an instance where one of these fails or gives way a little bit and we get a little bow in the wall, we can check it and move it back into place and rebrace it at the time when we're pouring. So it's just another way to uh, be able to check the wall and make sure we end up with a straight wall. I'm using another concrete cutout here. Basically what this is is a one inch nominal thickness piece of wood, uh, plywood, that is cantilevered out over the slab. Now what happens here is the concrete will fill up underneath this and around it and when the concrete cures this will end up being a notch out that's the exact width of the door threshold. So when we trim this out and bring plaster to it this is a really nice detail which allows us to uh, once the concrete is cured be able to sweep stuff right out of the house without having to deal with the threshold. Now this is roughly what your subgrade will look like before you get ready to pour. Uh, we've got our uh, again our compacted gravel the gravel bed raised up, the visqueen, which is the uh, waterproof plastic, the foam insulation, the sand, the dobies holding the steel up off of the sand. So this is a, basically a complete uh, ready-to-go slab. I've got some areas where I've bent the wire down to support it and keep it up in the air like this when the concrete lands on it. Um, 
other areas where the dobies are actually hanging to stop the, the wire from, from lifting up because its natural bend wants to pull it up. So with a hanging doby, we can pour concrete on top of that and it'll pull the wire down. Also here in the corner, I've got my conduit for my electrical uh, that's come running up through here. Now I just stubbed it out outside of the building. I didn't want to trench the full distance right now. So I've marked it with a stake. Uh, it goes right down to the pipe itself. So I can then trench back this direction and find it without uh, destroying my stake in the process.